Good evening, everybody. David Jones, Sergeant of Arms. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, tonight, I just want to make an announcement. Uh, Valentine Toastmasters, which is uh, also hybrid. They meet at the Earth Fair in Valentine. Their open house is this Thursday, and they meet Thursdays at, I believe, about 6.30. Yeah. And so if you're interested in going to another hybrid club on a Thursday night, that's just something to look at. Smaller venue, but they're doing the same thing as we are. So just wanted to throw that out there for them. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and get the meeting started. I'm going to turn it over to our presiding officer. And I'm, I'm not even speaking into the microphone. <laughs> That's I've never done that. I'm just... Our presiding officer, Eric Laxer. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster David, Mr. Past, past President. Uh, I am the presiding officer, which means I basically get the meeting started. For those of you who don't know me, I am VP of Education, and we usually start off by welcoming our guests and giving our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves and to just let us know how they found Toastmasters and what they're interested in by coming to our meeting tonight. So I would like to start with anybody who's online. And if you are a guest online, can you please raise your hand so I can see you? Super, super, okay. Uh, David, is this better just to check? Okay, all right, thank you. And I can't see your name, so if you don't mind, please just introduce yourself and again, let us know how you found Toastmasters and what your interest is. Hello, my name is Brianna. It's my first time joining and I would like to get more comfortable with public speaking and I heard about it from a colleague. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. Welcome to our meeting. And I am now going to walk around the room because I do recognize our guests because some of them have been here before and I believe you're Melissa. So if you want to take a moment and please introduce yourself to us. Hi, I'm Melissa Hutchinson. I have been here in person. This is my second time and a few times online. I live in the neighborhood. So when I was looking at Toastmasters, this was the one that was very convenient for me. And I'm looking forward to improving my public speaking. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue around here and I'm going to stop, I think, with Garrett. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Garrett. This is my second time here at this Toastmasters. Last week was my first time. Uh, I heard of Toastmasters when I was in college about five years ago and just never joined. I don't know why I didn't, but um, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and I guess I'm here just to be more comfortable public speaking and speaking in a large group. So thrilled to be here. Thank you. And I believe our next guest is Safwa. Did I pronounce that correctly? Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Safwa. Um, I joined this club about three years ago and then I decided to come back. So I'm still a guest, but I plan on joining at the end of the month so I can get better at public speaking as well. Thank you. Thank you. And we do have one more guest here, but who has the unusual distinction of also being a speaker this evening. And his name is Shannon, and I'll let him introduce himself and explain a little bit more detail about what I just said. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Shannon, longtime listener, first time caller. I was a post Toastmaster for years. Uh, once the pandemic hit uh, and schedule conflicts between the two, I, I drifted away for a couple of years, and now I, I'm ready to come back. I'm jonesing to come back because my, I need to get much more gooder at my speaking to be able to go out and, and, and find new experiences, which I'll touch on tonight in my speech. Thank you. 
Thank you. And again, welcome to all of our guests. I will add that we have a very exciting agenda tonight. And with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our Toastmaster of the Day, who is doing Toastmaster of the Day for the very first time and has already done an excellent job every time he's come up to the front of the room. So there's no pressure at all. We just want to welcome, please join me welcoming Toastmaster Junior Gomez. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honorable guests. Tonight, I want to open up the meeting with a quote. Do something uncomfortable today by stepping out of your box. You don't have to settle for what you are. You get to create who you want to become. And I say that because I remember the first time I came to Toastmasters and I sat at that table in the back and everyone was up here speaking and I'm just like, how in the world am I gonna do that? There's no way I'm gonna get up there, not tremble, not say and um so repeatedly and they were speaking so fluidly. I was so intimidated. And I remember saying to myself, the first couple of weeks I came, I, that after that third week, I remember saying, you know what, I don't want to go anymore. And it was because I was leaving, I was, I was stepping back into my comfort zone. And as humans, we truly do love comfort zones. We like to stay in where we know. If we know something, we just like to be in that specific location. But the thing is, when we stay in our comfort zones, we do not grow. There's no growth in staying in comfort. So with that, I want you guys to know that if you are thinking about coming up here and speaking and you don't want to, or if you're thinking about leaving Toastmasters and not pushing yourself to the next level, I'm here to tell you to do it. Sometimes you got to put your hand in the fire just to see that it's not that hot, you know? Um, with that, I want to introduce our um, joke master or inspirational thought, which is Reginald Harris. Thank you, Toastmaster Junior. Good evening, Toastmasters. My name is Reginald Harris. I'm your joke master tonight. And I want to start off with a short story. Um, I, I love to share stories when I talk to individuals or groups. So I think back when I was in an adult study program at Montreat College. Anybody here heard of Montreat College? All right, Montreat College was an adult study program. This program was back before there was online programming was, was popular. And so it was ironically on a Tuesday night from six to 10. And every week we had to prepare a paper, which, hey, give me all the papers you want. Me to, I prepare a paper, that's not a problem. But I also had to give a group speech and that's what I, I was dreading the group speeches. And so they used to give you these little, I call them Nerf stress balls. And so they gave everybody a stress ball. And I guess my section was no more than maybe about 50 seconds long, my part of the group speech. And so I would get up there and, you know, I'd be sweating, I would be shaking. And I have behind me that Nerf ball and I'd just be squeezing, squeezing the crap out of it. And I got through it. And then one night um, I was leaving class and my professor was like, hey, Reggie, let me talk to you for a second. I was like, okay. He said, I saw that you was nervous. And let me, let me help you out. I said, okay. He was like, give, give me your best joke. I started scratching my head. I'm like, what you want, but mama joke? He was like, no. G give me your, just whatever joke you got. Just give me your best joke. So I paused for a second. I said, okay. I said, why was the skeleton scared to cross the road? He said, I don't know. I said, because he didn't have any guts. And so he broke out and he started laughing. And in turn, I started laughing. And he was like, hey, that's where I want you to be right there. I want you to stay in that space. Humor. Whatever you do, find humor in it. And so I say to the speakers tonight, whether you're giving a speech, or whether it's a table topic, or if you're giving a future speech. Uh, just relax, find humor in what you're talking about, and give your best talk. Thank you. Incredible, I love it. Everyone has their method in finding ways to cope with coming up on stage, and Reginald found his, and you can find yours as well. I would like to introduce our 
recognized grammarian, and our recognized grammarian will be David Jones. Thanks, sir. So, as grammarian, one of my roles is to have the word of the day, and I have to remember what it is. Okay, challenge. That's it. Word of the day is challenge. And you're going to want to challenge yourself to use this word whenever you speak, whether it's table topics, your speech, your role that you're going to be introducing in a minute. And the other role is to listen to one of my biggest faux pas is saying, so, um, you know, but I'll be listening for all those and I will report back at the end of the meeting how we did. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Thanks, sir. That was one of the hardest things for me is, and um, so before coming up here, I was never conscious of how many times I said and and um and so, but the more you do it, the more you learn, the more you slow down, the more you get it. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the recognized timer, Matthew Skorheim. There you go. Hello, fellow Toastmasters and honorable guests. Uh, today I'm going to be tonight's timer. So we have two speeches, two main ones. So John, yours is going to be on. So four minutes at green, five minutes at yellow, and six minutes at red. So for table topics, that will be one minute at green, one and a half minutes at yellow, and two minutes at red. And then for our evaluators, we have John Capello for the first one. And I think we need a second evaluator to be to be named um so that green for two yellow for two and a half and red for three minutes all right thank you thank you and next we haven't had one of these in a while but now we have a ballot counter and i believe leon will be our ballot counter for the night by the way, thank you for stepping up today. I appreciate that. Hi, my name's Leon. Today, I am your ballot counter. Uh, part of the being a part of a ballot counter is within Toastmasters to just have a little bit of friendly competition, uh, being that when you look at the sheet here on your table, what you'll see here is first, second, third speaker. It gives you an opportunity to write any kind of feedback that you would like to give any of our speakers today. But then also down at the bottom, you'll see the ballot, which I would recommend you guys to begin to rip and tear off now. So it will make it a little bit more easier for you after each speech or each section is being given. And there you'll see your ability to vote for who you believe to be the best speaker. And after each section, I'll come around and collect each ballot so that at the end of the meeting, I could tally them all up and hand out all the given awards appropriately. So I look forward to it and I hope you guys enjoy it. So before we get into our next um, speakers, I want to touch base on something that I encountered when I first came to Toastmasters. So the first day I came, I remember table topics was something that I completely wanted to do. I remember you guys speaking about it. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to raise my hand and I'm going to be a part of it. I never spoken in front of people before, but I knew that I wanted to do it. And I did it. And when I got up here, my heart was, I mean, my heart was out of my chest. I think I started I, I didn't even know what to say. I, I don't think I made sense. And I remember I went home the next day. I had a meeting with my friend. We were talking about NFTs. But I started talking to him about this new adventure that I took and joining Toastmasters. And I told him, dude, you have no idea. My heart was pumping out of my chest. I, I didn't know what was happening. Like, I didn't know what, what, what I was saying. And he told me, hey, man, I just, maybe you should gain a different perspective on this. Maybe you should understand that when your blood is pumping that hard and your heart is racing that fast, understand that your body is getting ready for war. Your body is actually pushing itself to its limit to protect you, to protect you from the challenge that you're just gonna about to face. So understand is that don't run away from that, actually sit with it and embrace it. 
So whenever you feel that your heart is racing out of your chest and you're just like scared as heck, understand that you're actually getting ready for whatever it is that you're about to endure and your body is actually pushing you to the next level to endure that. So without further ado, we're gonna introduce our next speaker and that's John Lee and he is gonna be giving his icebreaker speech and his uh, title is Compound Effect. Uh, thank you fellow Toastmasters and honorable guests. Who here has heard of the compound effect? For those who haven't, uh, this phrase has been coined by Darren Hardy, a very prominent personal development coach, yet it is an age old principle that continues to prove itself time and time again. The compound effect states that one good or bad decision over time can drastically change one's life. In 2017, I discovered the hard way, the phenomenon known as the compound effect. It was a beautiful summer, sunny day in Charlotte, North Carolina. As I looked at myself in a dirty gas station mirror, I was horrified at the skeleton looking back at me. I was 120 pounds. I was completely homeless and ridden with addiction. I had no money, no car, and no purpose. That day, I decided to forever change the state of my life. The road to recovery was extremely difficult. I got my old job back, I rented a house, and I bought a car. I was so excited with my good fortune, I decided to celebrate, and I fell back into an old habit. This time, it cost me. That night, I overdosed, and I almost didn't survive. I fell into a complete psychosis and was barely able to speak for 18 months. Two months after that near fatal night, I found out I was going to be a dad. On the path of life, we all make decisions. Every movement, every breath, and every thought compound into our future reality. My reality was a creation of all of my vices and poor choices. That, I knew, needed to change. I began practicing yoga every single day. I liberated myself from the slavery of addiction. I quit doing drugs. I quit drinking. I quit smoking cigarettes. I even quit drinking caffeine and eating meat. I replaced every bad habit with a healthy one. I began running and exercising regularly, and I started following God. These positive choices slowly but surely came to fruition. My son came into this world healthy. I began to gain weight back and began the process of mental healing. As time went on, these positive choices became easier and easier, like a snowball rolling down a hill. Good habits began to gain momentum and grow with time. On this journey, God became the center of my life. Every movement, every breath, and every thought were now done to honor him. I realized that God will never leave us. He lets us pave our own path, even to the point of death. And then he reels us back in. 
After fully recovering from my overdose, life became beautiful again. I was fully able to embrace fatherhood. I started practicing martial arts, which is a lifelong goal of mine. And I was able to start building relationships again. After a neck injury in jujitsu, I met the love of my life at the chiropractor. She took my son in as her own. And from there, we started to build a family. As a society, we have failed to understand. It's the little things that add up. Small victories lead to great accomplishments. And the challenges that you face today will be but a speck of dust in the long run. Take a word of advice from someone who has truly experienced the compound effect. If you want to change your life, there is no better time than now. Thanks be to God. That was incredible, John. Thank you so much for sharing that story. I appreciate that. For our next speaker, um, we have our guest speaker, Shannon, and his title will be Jimmy Buffett, We Have a Problem. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guest, It was so apropos that John went right before me today. You want to talk about change, John. <laughs> I'm in that moment right now. I use these meetings kind of as my version of AA. I have to have some human interaction. I, I need to be able to speak to people. I tried to catch one earlier, the noon one at, what is it the fun club at the Wells Fargo and I didn't realize I needed to email the sergeant arms ahead of time to get my name on the guest list to enter the building so that's fine I I drove over here I was like well let me find this place before I drive home and I was actually sitting in this parking lot right here at 12 30 when my my manager called me and said Shannon I'm sorry we're gonna we're gonna have to let you go HR finished their investigation that that uh perceived infraction that you did well we're gonna let you go so where do i go from here is there any recourse of this because i wasn't involved in any meetings i never got a chance to talk to or meet whoever was accusing me of this malfeasance and uh oh i just said oh man I'm out of practice i apologize folks i never got to stand up and Talk to my accusers. No, no, this no recourse. Fine. I was a gate agent at the airport here. I worked with Piedmont Airlines. And as Dave told me today, Piedmont does still exist. They're wholly owned by American Airlines. They just handle all the regional flights now. I just got promoted last month to a trainer for the gate agents. When this happened, so I'm sitting in the parking lot thinking, crap, what else? When it rains, it pours. But I reflected. There are two individuals who have been silent mentors in my life. I've never met them, but they've always been there for me. That was the business philosopher, Jim Rohn, and the poet laureate of all times, Mr. Jimmy Buffett. I always consider myself the son of a son of a sailor, out on the sea for adventure, expanding the crew, 
expanding the view of the captain and crew like a man just released from adventure. That's what keeps me going. It's that mentality of there is always something on the horizon. Jimmy's got me through a lot of tough times, through de two deployments to Iraq, long nights with my child when she's not wanting to sleep. She's 19 now. Those are back in the days. But I remember what Jim Rohn says. And I actually have it as a Christmas gift. I gave it to myself here uh, two Christmases ago. It's my favorite Jim Rohn quote. It says, you know, it reads, the same wind blows on us all. It is not the wind, but the set of the sail that determines your course. I thought about that. I, I, I internalized that. But as I was sitting out there in the parking lot today, I thought to myself, what happens when it's not just a wind, but a Category 5 hurricane? How much can a sail handle? My sails are getting pretty old now. They've been dragged around. They got been patched up. They've been sun beaten and weather worn. So I think the question I was thinking today is what are my sails made of? Because my wind has changed today. The challenge was what were my sails made of? I started thinking about myself. What do I know about me? Well, I'm smart, well-educated, articulate, and very good-looking and amazingly humble. I have a lot of things going for me. After that first initial shock that I had today, I started thinking to myself, myself, my sales are made out of my experience and my confidence of knowing who I am and what I'm capable of. So I realize there's going to be challenges in the future. But that's okay. I'm, I'm ready for it. This gives me time to come back to Toastmasters. This gives me time. I want to start voiceover acting. I'm trying to audition for audiobooks now. What this is, is an opportunity for me to take down my sails, patch them up with some brand new Teflon reinforced fabric, and get back on my course, because I'm setting my course, regardless of the winds. It's all on me, ladies and gentlemen. So as I start from today forward, I know two things. One, I'm gonna be fine. I'm actually starting to get excited about my opportunities because I have a lot. I understand that I have a lot to offer. And two, that my desire to be a plus size male lingerie model is probably never going to come to fruition. <laughs> these things I know and these things I take with me. And I thank you for allowing me to share that with you today, Mr. Toastmaster. That was awesome. Thank you, Shannon. By the way, I listen to Jim Rohn every morning for at least 15 minutes through YouTube. Just put him on in the background. Just listen to him. He's one of the most inspirational speakers I've ever seen in my life. So moving on to the next topic of our meeting is Table Topics Master Sean Sahal. Thank you junior uh, table topics or the goal behind the ta table topics for this evening is 
I just want to mention that even though you're provided a topic to talk about, if it doesn't come to your mind quickly, you can always kind of pivot to some other topic. So Junior, thank you very much for introducing me to table topics for this evening. We have members and guests both online and on in the room as well. If I could get a member who would like to take a shot at table topics for this evening for our first topic, would anybody like to try? It can be online as well. I don't see, uh, if someone can help me uh, in the room, that would be helpful. Yeah, we have John. John is coming in right now. Fantastic. John, thank you very much and great speech as well. Getting out of your comfort zone is hard. People use different tactics to help them overcome their fear. You heard earlier uh, Reggie talk about humor and being in that humorous state before you go out and give a speech. What are some tactics you use to get out of your comfort zone? Tell us about a time, part two of this question, if you have time, is tell us about a time when you did get out of your comfort zone. And how did that make you feel? Yeah, thank you so much, Sean, for the question. And thank you, fellow Toastmasters and honorable guests. Um, to be able to get out of my comfort zone, um, there are multiple ways that uh, I usually go about it. Sometimes it depends on the situation, but a lot of times I just make myself, you know, I tell jokes to myself. And when I get up on stage and I feel like I'm nervous, such as even right now, because I'm very bad at answering random questions. So this is exactly why I come up on table topics. Um, you know, I just kind of laugh and realize that it's not the end of the world and that there are much worse things that could be happening. And that kind of smooths things over for me to realize that because I'm up on stage and I may stutter or say, um, it is not the end of the world. I can go home and live my life just the same. So, uh, part two, Sean, I apologize. Could you, um, re, uh, ask that question? Tell us about a time when you did get out of your comfort zone and how did that make you feel? Perfect. Uh, when I got out of my comfort zone, for instance, was today, um, my icebreaker speech, I, I tried do a speech last week, but life totally had a, uh, hit me like a freight train and I was unable to, all right, hold on, but <laughs> sorry, I have a little man with me today. And so I practiced all week. I wrote my speech in two days. I perfected my speech and literally I just began reciting the speech day in and day out. Uh, my wife is probably a, a tired of hearing my speech by this point because I would, I wouldn't, repeat it to her time and time again. And getting out of my comfort zone, coming up on stage Toastmasters is something that um, I wanted to come to in the first place because I'm terrible. I can't say I'm terrible. I, I'm getting better at public speaking. And it's the repetition of coming up here and doing things that you're afraid to do that makes it less scary. So I, I, if anyone here has not been up on stage yet, I suggest that you do so just to get to shake the fear off, come up here because it is not nearly as bad as it seems. And the first time I came up here, I was shaking, I was stuttering. I said, um, probably 20 times. And I went home that day laughing. And I was like, I can't believe I did that. I can't, I can't not go back. I can't leave myself. I can't leave myself doing that. Like that can be my last time, but yes. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, John. Do we have anyone else that would like to volunteer? Leon. Just give it up for Toastmaster Leon. Appreciate it. All right, Leon. Yeah. There is a quote that starts with the saying, learn from the mistakes of others. Rarely at times do we take this advice and end up making the same mistake over and over again. Your question is, do you tend to learn from the wisdom of others or from your own mistakes? Yeah, thank you, Jamie, for that question. And as you were asking that question, something that came to mind recently is, yes, I am typically somebody who grew up observing a lot of times the elders in my family, seeing mistakes that they made. 
And comparison to my younger brother, that's a little bit more hard headed. He kind of has to learn things on his own for the most part growing up, especially in my childhood and teenage years, I stayed out of trouble by just simply taking the advice of the adults and elders around me. However, at this time in my life, as I'm in a transitioning period in my life, I notice in a roundabout way that looking at the mistakes that I've seen other people made has been placing a huge sense of anxiety on me to be perfect in everything that I do so I don't make these mistakes. And inevitably, sometimes they become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And one of the things that I've been understanding more of is a quote from Buddha, which is the source of suffering is desire. So the desire to not do these mistakes that I've seen other people made is causing a great deal of suffering that's getting in the way of me simply enjoying life, allowing new relationships to grow, allowing new career opportunities, simply because of mistakes that I've seen other people made that I am myself nervous to make. Thank you. Very good job. Do we have any other volunteers? Did you? Hi. Hi. All right. Thank you, Safa. Thank you. There's a quote. There, there's a quote that we normally hear. I think I believe I heard Junior say it as well. And it's do one thing that scares you every day. If you had the time in your busy daily life, what would be your one daily activity that scares you? Thank you for that question, Sean. Uh, the one thing that scares me is public speaking, okay? Which is why I'm here talking to you guys right now. If you could see what's happening inside my chest, you would see my heart dancing. And it's dancing really hardcore. But I like it. And I really like what Junior said. Just coming up here and doing it anyway, working it out, it'll get better gradually over time. I know that there's something in me that I have to get out into this world. So I'm up here and I'm facing my fears. I let it hold me back for way too long, like years. Even in work settings, I would just bite my tongue and, and, and hold back all the things I had to say. But now I'm, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of living in fear. Life is too short. And so I'm going to face it. And I encourage you to do the same as well. Thank you. All right, excellent response. Junior, do we have time for another one? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. There we go. Garrett. Yeah. Garrett. Hello. Hi, Garrett. Your question for this evening is, when was the last time you tried something new and what was it? Okay, let me think about this for one second. When was the last time I did something new? Okay, so I have been working for a tool company for about a year now. And when I went in to the company, I knew almost nothing about power tools, um, really about what I'm selling on a day-to-day -day basis. I had zero to no knowledge. It was a very steep learning curve for me. Um, learning my day-to-day -day activities. And through this job, I, um, I've gotten my hands on a bunch of tools, uh, power tools, DeWalt drills and whatnot. And recently I installed a TV monitor that I had absolutely no idea how to do. I looked at 10 YouTube videos of how to do it. And it was really kind of my first time using a power tool to be honest with you. And it was kind of like, you know, I should know what I'm doing because I'm a man, but, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. 
So after about 10 minutes of, you know, YouTubing it and trying to figure it out, I finally got it installed and the TV hasn't fallen yet. So either I did it right or it's, I'm just waiting for it to collapse. So I would have to say that was it. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Sean. We have we have time for one more. If anyone wants to do it, sure. Come on, come on. Yeah. Let's go, Shannon. Shannon, thank you very much, and great speech, by the way. Obviously, it sounds like you're a very good speaker. You can speak well. And so my question for you is, if you could eliminate one fear, what would that fear be? Failure. Failure. Thank you for that question. That was a great question. Failure holds us all back. The fear of failure. The fear of not being able to succeed at something you desperately want to do. That stops us in our tracks on a daily basis. The fear of not being able to meet the standard, not being able to accomplish the goal, the, the fear of not being good enough to do or be what you want to be. Fear held me back for years from a lot of things. When I first came back from Iraq, I, I had some issues. I had a lot of fear, public spaces, porta johns still for Porter Johns. It's a long story. It's a whole nother speech, but the only way to get over fear is to face it, is to challenge yourself to get out there and do what everyone here has done tonight. Stand up, despite how nervous or anxiety filled they are, and face that fear. And once you face that fear, that's when you find out, really, you had nothing to worry about to begin with. What's the worst thing they're going to do? Kill you? Drag you out back? Beat you severely around the head and neck area? No. Generally, when you try something and fail, you're going to learn something. And the worst thing they're going to do is maybe stamp no dessert on your meal card. Which, is again, is another fear of mine. Uh, So stand up, try it, you'll get through it. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. I think at this point, I'd like to get a timer's report on the speakers, both for the table topics and I believe the previous two speeches as well. Okay, so thank you. To John, that was a great speech. And thank you, Shannon. Very inspiring. John, you came in at five minutes and 35 uh, seconds for your icebreaker speech. Shannon you came in at seven minutes and 18 seconds for your five to seven minute long speech. And for table topics, John, I apologize. I fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, two minutes and 18 seconds. Leon came in at one minute and 37 seconds. Safwa came in at one minute flat, and Garrett came in at one minute, 19 seconds, and Shannon at one minute and 53 seconds. Thanks. All right, thank you. Junior, back to you. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that. And for now, I am going to turn it over to Eric Laxer. He is our general evaluation evaluator. Thank you, <clears throat> Toastmaster Junior. I will be leading the evaluation portion of our evening. And for those of you who are not familiar with the evaluation process in Toastmasters, evaluation is a very important way for all of us to learn. We improve by getting feedback from other people. And in this case, we get feedback from our colleagues. With that, I'd like to call upon our first evaluator, who will be giving an evaluation for John Lee's icebreaker speech titled, The Compound Effect. Please join me in welcoming Toastmaster John Capello.
Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Good evening, Queen City, fellow Toastmasters, honorable guests, and John. I'm just going to start off and just say, wow. Just wow. I saw you walk through these doors, and you mentioned being nervous and all the things that we typically see out of first-timers here. We're talking about stepping out of our comfort zones, and you certainly did that. And there's something that I usually say to, to new members that are, that are going to give their icebreaker. I give them the old Zig Ziglar speech of or quote of, you don't have to be great to start, you just have to start to be great. And it's just a way of encouraging that your icebreaker is just your, it, 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 that's what it does. It breaks the ice. It's your chance to tell your story. And you way exceeded that. You way exceeded that. This isn't, this isn't, the, the types of things you were doing well are what I would argue veteran speakers do. Let me name a few that I thought really stood out. And before I mention that, let me just mention something about the suit, right? You have the suit, you're looking sharp tonight. And a lot of times a way to kind of kill those initial physiological responses when you're nervous is to put on your best outfit, something that instills a little compass, your favorite socks, whatever it is, that just gives you a little extra juice that that gives you that confidence when you're about to speak. Just something I want to note, and maybe that that, that was your, your super suit tonight. But things I thought you did well, I, you know, engaging the crowd, uh, starting with the rhetorical question, uh, you, you laid out the compound effect and what it was, and the, really the power of positive thinking, momentum, and later, obviously, your spirituality and, and things that help guide you. But things that I thought like your use of the story, we always talk about the use of the story, being vulnerable and being courageous and sharing your story. This is what helps us connect. This is what the crowd all like resonates with. And to have that courage to share that very personal stuff is what I think helps really ha have everyone connect with you. And that's, that's really the goal. Other things I thought that I really want to highlight, your use of pauses. You had some strategic pauses and not even veteran speakers don't do this, and certainly not people starting off for the first time. But when you slow down very specifically, when you're, you're delivering a very important point or something you want really to sink in, I mean, you did it perfectly. And then, with you, then you would change your cadence when you were kind of you know, going through more expl explanatory things. So really want to highlight that. Uh, what else? And then obviously, uh, I thought you know, your challenge at the end to, to really instill that positive momentum, to embrace spirituality and help guide you through life, taking radical change. I mean, nothing changes unless you do. And you really drove that home tonight. And I, I couldn't be more, honestly, just blown away. Now, you did ask me to watch for two things. You asked me to watch for filler words. And none. I, I, I didn't catch one. I, I, maybe the grammarian will, will correct me. But I'm telling you, I thought it was crystal clean. Very good for your first speech. And last thing you asked me to watch is body language. I thought it was very professional. Maybe if, if a lot of times when you first start, you, you're wondering what to do with your hands. But if you just use more hand gestures, it helps to kind of like kind of fill the void. Overall, I'm really blown away. And I have only one challenge left for you. And that's to keep coming up here. Mr. General Valuet. Thank you, Toastmaster John. Our next evaluator will be for the speech given by Toastmaster Shannon titled Jimmy Buffett. We have a problem. Please join me in welcoming Toastmaster David Jones. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Good evening again, Toastmasters. Shannon, thank you for giving us a speech tonight. One of my Achilles heels is giving evaluations. Therefore, the more I do, the better. Now, your title, Jimmy Buffett, we have a problem that's great for me because I love Jimmy Buffett. Grew up in Miami in the Florida Keys, so you can't go wrong with that title. But you started as a guest, and you didn't really prepare for the speech. You said you were talking about it or thinking about it in your car since 1230 today. And usually when we talk about real-life events, it's easy to follow that path. It's hard to get off track because you know exactly what happened today. <laughs> today. Uh, but that's part of the greatness of your speech was you're very vulnerable with the audience. And I think people that are vulnerable with the audience and tell true life stories, like we heard from John today, I've heard from Reggie and John and everybody, anytime you tell a, a personal story, that always resonates with the audience. 
to the basics, you had great hand gestures. You actually used the stage, and those are always great things. You quoted some of uh, Jimmy Buffett's songs as speeches. You didn't sing them. You just said them. So some people don't know Jimmy Buffett, don't, don't realize it, but I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and one of the things you said that stuck out to me as a grammarian was silent mentors. And so many of us have silent mentors in life, whether they're musicians or actors or motivational speakers. And after you talked about the Jim Rome quote, you gave a great I don't know if it was on purpose, but a, a nice pause, a little bit of silence just to, to let people soak in what you had just said. I thought that was great. You were very humorous about yourself, which is always good. And the main thing is you kept sailing as a metaphor. You kept going back to sailing, and it's good to have a metaphor in your speech that you can always go back to and reference. So I'd always encourage you to, to use a metaphor like that. The only room for engagement or room for improvement was engagement. I you talked about so many things where you could have asked people if they knew who Jimmy Buffett was or if anybody ever had a bad day or you know, there were areas where you could have asked questions and engaged the audience and maybe had somebody raise their hand and tell a quick story. But other than that, it was a great speech, especially off the cuff and last minute. And we appreciate you coming and giving us your speech, Mr. General Evaluator. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you, David. I would now like to ask Toastmaster Matt to come up and give us a timer's report, please. Okay, for our first evaluator, John Capello came in at three minutes and 27 seconds, and David Jones came in at two minutes and 16 seconds. Thank you, Matt. I would now like to spend a few minutes evaluating the meeting as a whole, and then we will conclude the evaluation portion by asking for a grammarian's report. I'd like to first comment to Junior. This was the first time you were Toastmaster of the day. You did an outstanding job. You spoke smoothly, you seemed comfortable, you were well prepared, and true to the style we've seen with your presentations in the past, you did this from the heart, and you shared some of your personal experience with us and that is always incredibly motivating for everybody who hears you speak. I also jotted down a couple of quotes that you said that I think some of us or all of us should remember. One was, there is no growth staying in comfort. That's absolutely true. That's why we're all here. It was not easy for me and probably anybody to walk through that door the very first time we did so, but here we are. And then you said, sometimes you have to put your hand in the fire just to see that it is not that hot. And again, I thought that was an outstanding quote. So thank you for being such an excellent Toastmaster for us here today. Reginald, I can repeat almost everything I just said to Junior about your motivational speech, because you also shared with us some of your personal experience and you gave us a great little thought or trick to reduce nervousness, which is to focus on humor, which is always very helpful. And I know that when I'm speaking, if I can get the audience laughing very early on, it really helps me calm down and relax. So that's great advice. We had other people who I think were doing roles for the first time today. Matt, was this your first time being timer? Leon, your first time being ballot counter? I thought you both represented your roles at the front of the room very, very well. Thank you for doing that. Table topics, Sean, excellent choice in your questions. They were very relevant to the topic today. And I think you made everybody think just a little bit, but didn't really push people too far in terms of their stress experience. So well done there. And a couple of comments to our two evaluators, John and David. These were excellent evaluations, just to point out to other people as we're learning how to be good evaluators, the typical approach is to point out some of the things that each speaker does well, and then offer a few suggestions of things to work on or things that they could try to improve for the next time that they, that they speak. The word incredible gets thrown around very easily, but I think that's a good word to use to describe today's meeting because we had a lot of challenges here. I mentioned some of them already. Junior, first time as Toastmaster. John, giving your icebreaker speech. And Shannon showing up and giving a speech despite an exceptional and very challenging day that you had in your life today. So I wish you the best of luck. 
With that, I'd like to call for a grammarian report. And once again, please join me in welcoming Toastmaster David. Start with my grammarian report. I didn't really hear too many uh, filler words. I know they probably all came from me, so I didn't hear enough to stick out that I'd even write them down. Some of the better uses of language, uh, Erica's already pointed out. I'm not going to go over those again. And does everybody know this uh, word of the day? Can, can everybody say it? Challenge. Challenge. Everybody today used the word of the day. I think it's the first time ever that we've all used the word of the day. And with that, I'm gonna give it back to our general evaluator. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Toastmaster David. I would now like to call upon Junior to close out the Toastmaster part of the meeting. And please join me once again in welcoming him, welcoming him back to the front of the room. Thank you. As Eric just said, this meeting, in my opinion, not just because I was the Toastmaster of the day, but it was incredible. It actually was. I, there was a different type of energy today, an energy that I felt that everyone was almost on the same chemistry, same wavelength in wanting to just show everyone that it's okay to be up here and it's okay to make mistakes, that it's okay not to understand and not to know because in reality, None of us know anything. We're trying to figure it out every single day. Every single day we wake up, we're learning something new. And as we should, right? One of the words that I heard was mistakes and, and fear. Without mistakes, without the fear, we truly do not know. We couldn't be here right now sitting in these chairs, right? We couldn't be here understanding that we have to get better from where we, we once were. When we were born, we, 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 we crawled, and then we learned how to walk. We fell over and over and over again. Let's be kids again, right? Let's be kids. Let's keep falling, but we're going to keep getting back up, and we're going to keep walking until we start running. So with that, I want to end the meeting. And oh, wait, one more. Oh, ballot counter. I'm so sorry. So the ballot counter, um, we have Leon coming up. Oh, we're still <laughs> counting? OK. Oh, here it comes. I messed it all up. I'm sorry. Thank you, Junior. Yeah, so here tonight, I'm here to award our winners after doing a successful ballot count. Uh, but first and foremost, I'd like to honor John for stepping up and taking on the challenge of giving his icebreaker by awarding you with an icebreaker ribbon. Uh, and then next, we'll go into giving out an award for table topics. And again, thanks to Sean for the amazing question. And today's best table topic winner goes to Safwa. And then next, again, thanks for both our speakers today. And today I will be also giving out the best speaker award. And it also goes to John for giving his speech today. And then the last award I'll be giving out is for best evaluator. And that award goes to John today. <laughs> All right, it was great, thanks. <laughs> and I believe that's, oh, we have Eric coming up as to end the meeting. Thank you everyone. We usually end our meeting by going back to our guests and asking them for feedback or their experience in the meeting and they can share anything else they'd like to share with us. I'm going to go in reverse order this time. So I'm going to come around here and ask Shannon to 
take the mic one more time. Thank you. Great meeting, great energy. And I believe John has been sandbagging you because that was the best icebreaker I have ever heard. That was phenomenal, my friend. Great story. Great delivery. That was absolutely, positively fantastic. Dave, on the other hand, <sighs> may need some work. But all in all, great vibe, great feeling. I, I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. Thank you. Safwa, back to you. Um, yeah, John, incredible. Like, I would have never guessed just by looking at you all the things that you've been through. So I really appreciate your story. And for you being vulnerable and brave enough to share it with us. Incredible. And, and thank you, Shannon, for your humor. You're really funny. I do want to talk to you after class about voiceover acting. Uh, and I'll be back next time. Thank you, Safa. Garrett, over to you. Yeah, David, for an icebreaker speech, that was incredible. Oh, my goodness. If I can get up there for an icebreaker speech and do half as good as you did, I made it. So huge congratulations to you. Shannon, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, you delivered your speech with such eloquence and class and humor, and it was just truly incredible. Uh, this was my second time being here, so I don't have very many experiences being here, but like Junior said, something was just different, it felt, about this meeting, um, and it was a truly special time, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, and Melissa? Thank you, and I echo what they said with the speeches tonight were amazing and just so inspirational from the Toastmasters and the quotes that you gave to the stories and off the cusp today. I don't know how you pulled that together. So great job to everybody. And I just always feel very inspired and learn a lot, even though sitting back for now, but I always learn some tips each time I come. So thank you. And then if we can have our guest online come back and give us feedback one more time, that would be great. And I th think it's Tatiana. Is that right, David? OK, so obviously I need a little help with this part of the meeting. If any of the guests online want to give us some feedback about the meeting or just introduce yourselves, feel free to unlock your camera. And, uh, and then we'll give you an opportunity to do so. Okay, or, or if not, that's okay as well. And this brings our incredible meeting to an end. I would like to thank everybody who participated here, and I will officially adjourn this evening's Toastmaster meeting. Thank you all.